Support for this podcast and the following message come from CFP, Certified Financial Planner Professionals. CFP professionals are trained to provide holistic financial planning in your best interest. Visit letsmakeaplan.org to find your CFP professional. Let's click and clack the Tapper Brothers, and we're broadcasting this week from the Center for Continued Daylight Savings here at Car Talk Plaza. Now, indeed, indeed. As you probably know, we have now been saving daylight ever since, like, early April. Where have we been putting all this extra daylight? I don't know, maybe in those huge tanks next to the emergency oil reserves that we have. Yeah, there are daylight tanks and, all over the country. Don't you see them? Yeah, well, I, and even though reserves of daylight are very low, in a matter of days, based on instructions from some unnamed genius, we will all set our clocks back one hour and we'll immediately plunge ourselves into a deep national depression yeah. as we watch it get pitch black outside before we even leave work for the day. Now, in my brother's case, it's pitch black before he leaves for work. But that's... And it's still going to be light when I leave work <laughs> for the day. I think. Because I'm afraid to drive in the dark, and that's why I leave so early in the winter. How's that? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I never thought of that before. <laughs> well, I think it's time to call for a boycott. And I'm with you. Just don't do it. Just refuse. Just say no. We have what, like two and a half million listeners every week? Six. Six, six and a half million? No, 2. six, 6. Oh, six listeners. Six listeners. Oh, then it might not work. But anyway, <laughs> each of them is responsible for, say, what? Maybe five clocks. A watch, a bedside clock, kitchen clock, clock in the car, maybe a clock at work. If everyone listening today just refused to set back his clock, okay, and maybe sets one other unsuspecting person's clock ahead, we could create mass confusion, and we could beat this thing. I mean, this is the sort of thing, I don't want to brag or anything, but this is the sort of thing that the other presidential candidates just aren't addressing. This is going to get us I elected. Mean, this is one this of the one issue. issue. Just to, p- to point out that we think of stuff like this. The other jerks, they're <laughs> thinking about the Federal Reserve Bank. Who cares about that? That stuff doesn't matter. Turning the clock the wrong way, that matters. That affects our lives every day. And a vote for us... Is a vote for chaos. For daylight. <laughs> <laughs> all right, already. All right. <laughs> Gee, I got carried away with all the debate stuff. <laughs> anyway, if you'd like to talk to us, our number is 888 Car Talk. That's 1 888 227 8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Kathy from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Ann Arbor, Michigan, so it must be Kathy with a K. Hey, you are one smart guy. Well, uh, you notice I've never been wrong on the Kathy thing. Oh, come on. I have never been wrong on the Kathy thing because I know the rule. Louie, we, we, we need... You find any yeah, call, I, well, go I through ga- the tapes. Louie has all the tapes. If you... Louie Cronin has all the tapes. And I guarantee you, by this time next week, <laughs> we will have... have at least 10 examples where you say, that Kathy, no, I'm no. sorry. No. That Kathy, no, I'm sorry. You'll see. I've anyway, never been wrong on the Kathy one. Kathy with a K from Ann Arbor, what can we do for you? Um, I have a light plum that's very important, Saturn. Light plum. And it has about 86,000 miles on it now. And it has this thing that after I drive it for a little bit of time, probably about 10 minutes at a high speed, if I have to go into reverse, my car will do this very nice. Mm, we'll wait for 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and then it will go. Ka-clunk! And then I'll be in reverse. And oh, then I it's, can go. it's not. A, it's an automatic transmission. Car. Oh yeah. Oh well, yeah. Used to be. Used and to about be. Um, well, about two months ago, I had to have the head gasket replaced because there was oil in it. There was a crack in something, and Saturn did a recall. Oh, oil was getting into your coolant. Yes. Yes. Right. Exactly. Right. And so I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but it's a very delicate car. Like Would you like it to have something to do with it? Okay. If that means Saturn has to pay for <laughs> That's it. That's going to be harder for us because it doesn't have anything to do with it. But we'll work on it. How many miles are on it again? Uh, 86. 86. 86K. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're really mm-hmm. lucky, no, no, and, no. and it sounds like you're a nice person no. and, and deserving of some good fortune. Because <laughs> mm. I'm a student with lots of loans, yeah. Oh, oh you're, no, <laughs> you're done for. <laughs> you are oh, done no. for. Well, if you're really lucky, you're just low on transmission fluid. Oh, I like that. Have you ever checked it? Uh, Never mind. No. Never, you don't have to answer if you have to hesitate that long. And so let's see what is a trans. Where way, is I just the got trans- my first set of new tires at eighty six thousand miles because I didn't know any better. So, well, I, I would take it into the, your repair shop, and you must have one of those. Okay. Better still, go to a gas station. Okay. And ask that person at the gas station to check 
the transmission fluid for you. Yeah. Okay. That person will pull out the dipstick, check the fluid, and if you're lucky, it's down a quart or so. Okay. That and, would be just great. And if that's the case, filling it up will probably fix this problem. I like that. That doesn't mean that the problem is solved entirely because you're not supposed to lose fluid. You don't burn up transmission fluid like you do engine oil. Oh. If you're losing any, it means you have a leak. Oh. And and so then you have once you've uh, rectify the the existing you know the the, the, the uh, symptom the symptom there you go that's it <laughs> then you can go ahead and address the the real issue which is where where is it leaking from so that's something I should ask for for Christmas right but if okay. if yeah. in fact the transmission fluid does doesn't fix it mm -hmm. then you're probably in for a rebuild that's not pretty well you might be eligible for for a federal uh, uh, SLTR which is a student loan for transmission rebuild. <laughs> so. You should investigate that. There's a that. website for that, yeah. Yeah, there <laughs> is a website. The form. See you, Kath. All right, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. With a K. Of course. One, my brother's never wrong about that. one eight 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 car talk That's 888 Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hello, uh, my name is Andras. Uh, I'm from Swanee, Tennessee. Andras. Hello there. Wait a minute. Hold it. Andras. Yeah, Andras. Like when you take out the trash. O-N-D-R-A-S? A-N-D-R-A-S. A-N. Yeah. By the way. Where are you from? Um, I live in Swanee, but I'm born in Hungary. You must be a college professor. No, no, no. I'm just a chef cooking for all the uh, school of theology students and professors. Ah. Yes. Yeah, so, well, uh, is, is there a college in Swanee, Tennessee? Oh, yeah, the University of the South. Also the uh, School of Theology. Oh. So, uh, Episcopal uh, uh, ministers. Oh, so you are providing food. The other, the, the professors provide food for thought, and you provide food for eating. Yes, they provide yes, spiritual um, nourishment. And, and yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Nourishing my little sheep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what's up? Well, there's a situation. I have a a, a 1992 uh, F-150 four-wheel drive uh, pickup truck. Got it. And. Uh, I had uh, a couple months ago, I had a little problem as I coming up on this beautiful uh, mountain. I lost oil pressure. Of course, I had uh, about uh, 30 uh, bags of this concrete in the back there, you know, this quick crit mix. Oh, you're and, making uh, pancakes the next morning, right? <laughs> 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 on, my, on my little side job in there. Yeah. So uh, the oil pressure just suddenly dropped down and... Um, Next morning when I started up, it started click, 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 clicking. Oh, I said, oh, oh my what? God, my valves maybe got it. So I take him to the repair shop, and they said, yes, we have to fix your valves as well. We have to fix, replace your uh, camshaft bearings oh. and your oil pump as well. Oh. So getting to this big expense, oh. talking about $1,200. Oh. The thing is, it's very quiet and very beautifully running now. But every time when I, I, I heat up the engine and the oil gets hot, and as uh, soon as I take my foot up the gas pedal, I'm just rolling into the intersection to the, to the complete stop. Of course, the RPM is drops down to seven, 800, yeah. and uh, the oil pressure is just whoop, goes down also. All the way to zero? Yes. Well, see, see when, they, when they said, uh, Muhammad, Muhammad, mm. they replaced the camshaft bearings. Yes. They replaced... The uh, the lifters, the lifters, in the, and yes. of course they replaced the oil pump. But they did not replace the main bearings. Is that correct? Did they at least take the main bearings out and measure everything? No. Oh, no, they don't. But mm. they charge me. Uh, they charge you twelve hundred bucks to do this work. Twelve hundred yeah. bucks for the camshaft. You know, that sounds about right. Well, unfortunately, I think a lot of the work they did, especially the replacement of the camshaft <laughs> you're, you're bearings, you're not going to like this. Is for naught. You're yeah. going to have to do the work over again, and this time you're going to have to replace the main and connecting rod bearings too because you, you have a, a situation where you starve the engine of oil more than once now, and when you, whenever you do that, you ruin the bearings. If the bearings don't get up. oil, then... Andres, you uh, there? <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, and when they had the oil pan off, they, it was, would have been so easy to look at the main bearings and the connecting rod bearings, and they seems like they didn't do it. And if that's they had, why if they had pulled off those caps, they would have seen that those bearings were all yeah. chewed up. And it's not holding pressure because when you when the oil pump pumps, but if the bearings are not tight, it won't hold the pressure, which is exactly what's happening. Right. But it will get worse. <laughs> that, isn't that good news? Yeah. It will get worse because it will get. I, I can't wait for that day. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I mean, I'll, the only reason I say that in my convoluted logic is that uh, you could go back and tell these guys to do what they have to do. On the other hand, you could wait until it got worse. No, no, I would go back right away because... They're not going to do anything. Well, what they're going to do, they're going to rebuild the entire engine, which is what you should have done in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, bummer. I'm going to have to sell the truck. Oh, probably. man. Well, good I'm luck. I'm sorry we didn't have better news for you, Andre. Well, thank you. It's actually it's pretty good. Uh, it's a direct steering me to direction, get a brand new truck. Good luck, Andre. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. 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 1888 Car Talk. That's 888 227 8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Kathy. I'm from Phoenix. From Phoenix, and that's with a K, absolutely. Are you sure about yes, that? Yes, I am. So what does it end with? An I. Wrong, Ola. <laughs> <laughs> on both counts? <laughs> Wait, you tricked me on that one. It's Kathy. It's K-A-T-H-Y. I-E. <laughs> that's it. Finally, finally. Sure, it's a basic <laughs> Kathy from Phoenix. I've never been wrong on the Kathy front here. <laughs> we'll never. S- we'll see. We may have to have a special edition of Stump the Chumps. <laughs> anyway, Kathy from Phoenix, what, what's up? All right. This is a problem. I've got a caravan that's still under warranty. Good. Which is the only reason I ever went to the dealership. Yeah. Because as soon as that 36,000 mile change, Your I'll be gone. Yeah. <laughs> However... I went because I had my, my uh, brake light coming on on the dash. Yeah. And so I brought it home. I told my husband. He opens up the hood. Well, all the brake fluid is drained down. I mean, it's drained down. Mm. You know, the whole reservoir part is not full anymore. And, of course, there's probably more underneath, but you can't see that. Mm. So he fills it up. The brake light goes off, and he comments to me, you know, these brakes have always been spongy. Now, this is news to me. I've been driving all over town. I hadn't noticed. But, yeah. you know, guys have a better feel for this, I guess. Yeah, well, so, we don't want to get into that either. Yeah, well... <laughs> <laughs> so I take it to the dealership, and what a big surprise. They can't find anything wrong with it. The brakes are feeling fine. There's no, there's no problem with the brake fluid, but of course, being low, but of course they do have something that I can pay for as an out-of-pocket expense, which is a brake flush because they say my brake fluid is thick and dark. Well, no. Sounds like a scam to me. All right. Now, I'm so glad to hear that because I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you Th- mean to those tell are me? the words, wait a minute. <laughs> wait just a minute. Do you mean to tell me I've got a brand new car, practically speaking, here, isn't a brake system supposed to be a closed system? If I'm losing significant enough fluid that it comes up as my whole reservoir empty, aren't I in danger of having brake failure? And this guy, my service representative, tells me, oh, no, 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 not at all, because you've got 50% wear on your brakes. So that means the calipers have to stretch out further to hit your brake wall, and the fluid goes down to fill that up, and that's why it's low. He's right about that. Get out of here! <laughs> <laughs> Lighten up, will you, Kathy? <laughs> Kathy! <laughs> well, the fact that it is a closed system, and it is, means, that, I mean, when you step on the brake, what happens is the pressure is transmitted by the fluid to right. the calipers and all that stuff. And uh-huh. as the brakes wear out, as they are supposed to do, right. they, they wear out. What does that mean? Something disappears. Pieces of it disappear. Yeah, they, but is my brake like four inches thick? I don't think no, so. The no, 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 it doesn't take very much. No, the much. brake lining is three-eighths of an inch thick. Right. Right, and it doesn't take very much. If you're down 50%, that means, don't forget, you got two brake pads on the right front wheel, you got two brake pads on the left front wheel, you got two in the back and two in the back. All of those being worn out by half of three-eighths, which is probably four-eighths, or <laughs> one-and-a-half-eighths, <laughs> means that all of that space had to be filled up with brake fluid. And so it's very possible that the reservoir looked like it was almost empty. That's a lot of brake fluid. And then what would happen when you filled it up, what you did was you you display, you filled up the fluid that was now in the system. Correct. If you now go ahead and put new pads in, you will push that fluid back up through the brake lines and, and splash it all over the and inside the mass of your cylinder engine. reservoir will overflow. Okay, so why was my brake fluid sluggish then? Well, I think they were making that or up. brackish. Well, because he knew that all you really needed to do was to fill up the reservoir. But well, which I had already Which you had already done. So he couldn't charge you for that because what? You did it. Correct. <laughs> so he had to there find something to charge you for. But. But what? <laughs> okay, here's my, here's my second uh, it's, get, Getting rid of her is going to be tough. Right See, the problem is that, 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 I mean, a lot of dealerships will tell you, don't replace the brake fluid when it looks low, because when we get around to replacing the brake pads, we're going to make a horrible mess 
because it's going to overflow the reservoir. Well, plus you okay. defeat the inherent warning system built into the reservoir uh, float mechanism, which is designed to tell you, as it reads the drop in brake fluid level, that in fact your brakes are worn out. So it, when you saw the light come on, if you weren't so s suspicious of the dealership's <laughs> motives, you would have just <laughs> taken the thing in and asked them to check your brakes. At which point they would have said, oh, Kathy, it's time for new brakes. And you would have said, really, after 34,000 miles? And they would have said, well, they do wear out pretty quickly on these new vehicles. And <laughs> well, you would actually, have said, oh, okay, if it's not more than 800, go ahead and do it. <laughs> <laughs> and no. that's what a good customer would have done. You know, no one, no one suggested that. Not one single person. No, they didn't. No, they were afraid of you. <laughs> As are we. <laughs> <laughs> but you should obviously keep an eye on the fluid level, and if it does seem to drop at a rate that, that is ever-increasing, then you do have a leak. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if you had a leak. And you also okay. do have wear indicators on the brake pads, and they will sort of tell you when they're ready to get replaced. Okay. Good luck, Kathy. It's been a pleasure talking to you, and we're very happy that you live in Phoenix and you're not our customer. <laughs> <laughs> That could change anything. That could change anything. <laughs> hey, thanks for calling. A pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, now, before we give the answer to last week's puzzler, we have to take a short break. Yeah, my brother's donut gauge only says a quarter full. <laughs> we'll be back in a minute. And even though 9 out of 10 listeners say they'd rather listen to an hour of fingernails on a chalkboard <laughs> whenever they hear us say it, this is NPR. This message comes from Car Talk and NPR sponsor BetterHelp, a truly affordable online counseling service. Fill out a questionnaire online and get matched with a licensed counselor best suited to your mental health needs. Whether it's depression, anxiety, or trauma, BetterHelp will help you overcome what stands in the way of your happiness. Learn more at BetterHelp.com and get 10% off your first month with promo code CARTALK. BetterHelp. Get help anytime, anywhere. This message comes from CARTALK and NPR sponsor Hammerker Schlemmer, providing products that cleverly and effectively solve everyday problems, including how to find the perfect gift for those who have everything or profess to need nothing. Today, their lineup includes a jigsaw puzzle created from a reproduction of the New York Times that ran on the day you were born, or any other milestone date. Find this and other items at hammerker.com. Use code NPR20 to receive $20 off your order. On the next episode of Louder Than a Riot, how a law meant to control the mob changed the mixtape game forever. Gangsta Grills is the biggest thing arguably ever in the mixtape's history. Don't tell me that what we're doing is wrong. Listen now to Louder Than a Riot, the podcast from NPR Music. Hi, we're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us, Click and Clack, the Tappet Brothers, and we're here to talk about cars, car repair, and uh, the answer to last week's puzzler. Now, this was sort of an anthropological, geological, algebraic, and above all, obfuscational oh, yeah? puzzle. Yeah, I think I so. I don't remember yeah. any about anything this was, about it. This was from the Blind Them With Footwork collection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Those are the best. Yeah. Those are good. Yeah, this was this wasn't really cricket, but hey, tough. <laughs> In the little Asian country of Tuvaniska, there are two small towns separated by a mountain. And we'll call the towns Abba and Baba. And the preferred footwear in both of these little uh towns is the combat boot. Now Abba has a population of twenty thousand. You need a pencil for this, so Oh, get a, get, I remember get this, yeah. They have 20,000 and one feet, one foot. So of the 20,000 people in ABBA, 1% have only one foot. Yeah. yeah got so 1% wear only what? One boot. One boot. Of the remaining population, half of them wear no boots. Mm -hmm. And the rest wear two boots. 
like you would expect. Yeah. In Baba, on the other side of the mountain, 20% of the people have one foot. Mm-hmm. Of the remaining people, half wear no boots mm-hmm. and half wear two boots. 20,000 boots are worn in Baba. So what's the population of Baba? I have no idea. I, 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 I can just guess. Go ahead. Zero. How could it be zero? <laughs> Who's wearing the boots? I don't know. Maybe visitors. <laughs> well, oh, it's, go... not, it's, not, it's not zero. It let's go be... to Abba for a second. Yeah, we go to Abba. Okay, 1% of the population is one, is Has one footed. Yeah. Half of the remaining population wears no boots. Yeah. Right? Right. And and the, obviously the other half of the remaining population wears the, the conventional the two boots. Two boots. Okay, and if you go and, and if you figure that out, you'll yeah. find out that there are twenty thousand boots worn in Abba. Oh, okay, and it turns out that it doesn't make any difference what percentage of the population has one leg. No kidding. And so when you go to Baba, even though twenty percent of the population has one foot, because they have one foot, that's also equivalent to, to being like half the population. Of, of is it co- not? Of course. So every person that has one boot is just like the other part of the population where half of the people wear Don't no wear boots. Any so, the, boots. so the average is that half the people wear a boot. Therefore, one boot per person comes out to 20,000. So if there are 20,000 boots worn in Baba, the population must be 20,000. <laughs> <laughs> or zero. <laughs> well, that that's very, that was well. It was it. I, well, that was obfuscated. That was beautiful. Yeah, it was very simple math, but yeah, uh, I had I had to blind you with the footwork. Well, you had to because it eluded yeah. me. If I, for example, if I asked you what's what's half of twenty thousand multiplied by two, <laughs> you would have known the answer. I would have right known off. the answer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do we have a winner? You bet we have a winner. The winner this week is Frank Freeman from Greensboro, North Carolina. And for having his answer selected at random from among all the correct answers that we got, Frank is going to get a $26 gift certificate to the Shameless Commerce Division at cartalk.com, with which he can get a copy of our book, Ask, Click, and Clack. It's a collection of our newspaper columns in which people ask us car questions, and then we largely ignore the question and write about whatever we feel like writing about. (laughs) Oh, kind of like what we do here on the show, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. With the added bonus that you don't have to listen to us. <laughs> That's when you just turn the page. <laughs> anyway, we'll have a brand new historic and folkloric Ooh. and whatever puzzler coming up in the third half of the show today. So stay tuned. In the meantime, if you have a question about your car or anything else, give us a call. Uh, the number is 888-CAR-TALK. That's 888 228 255, a lawyer on Car Talk. Well, hi, guys. My name is Larry Mudd. I live in New Jersey, and I minister in Manhattan. Hi, Larry. How you go- How you doing? I'm doing well. You, you minister in Manhattan? Yes, I work for a church here. Okay. Uh-huh. So what's going on? Well, I'm hoping that you can resolve yet another spousal dispute. My wife and I... Wait uh, a minute. Recently... You want us? We well, usually start the spousal <laughs> disputes. <laughs> well, and and don't an... people usually come to you with this kind of stuff? Well, this is an area where my expertise is not needed, and yours is. Okay, go ahead. We'll do our best. Uh, Well, our family recently expanded. We've had our second child, and my wife and I are looking into buying a minivan. Mm -hmm. I'd like to buy, well, we need to buy a used one because we don't make much money, and I'd like to buy from a reputable, I guess, a rental car company because the prices seem fair, and I think the company's kept good care of the car. They keep everything in good repair. Mm-hmm. My wife thinks it's a bad idea because of what her old boyfriend used to do with his rental cars when he was <laughs> on the road. So, uh-huh. what did he used to do? Well, uh, I'll she's tell you what my brother used to. <laughs> do. Never mind. <laughs> it, well, <laughs> well, what she said he used to do, whether it was dry or wet, uh, he he'd pick uh, the biggest empty parking lot and do donuts and. Uh, uh, something about popping the emergency brake and uh, uh-huh. just trying to mistreat it as much as possible. Well, we we have. <laughs> I have to tell the story. No, you can't tell the story. <laughs> I have to tell the, the story. The statute of limitations <laughs> hasn't run out yet. My brother and his dear friend and my dear friend Tony. <laughs> it was actually Tony, I think, who who worked for the company, right? Yeah, I, I don't remember. I, <laughs> don't, I don't remember, remember anything. He doesn't remember anything. No. That's the best. That's the best way. <laughs> well, we we live in Boston, and 
obviously a lot of people uh, would rent the car at the airport and drive someplace and not return it to the airport. So the rental company had to have the cars returned whenever someone didn't return it to the right. airport himself. And in order to get to the airport here in Boston, you have to go through a tunnel because the airport's underwater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, kind of. So you, you went through a tunnel. Well, Tony decides that he's driving all these cars all the time, and he finds, he, he notices a very interesting thing. When he's driving through the tunnel, if he shuts off the engine and turns it back on again, he gets the most powerful backfire <laughs> you could ever imagine. <laughs> and it reverberates, of course, because he's in this big tunnel. Right. <laughs> so he got my brother to help him. <laughs> <laughs> and they were driving these cars back through the tunnel. And I'm sure that the next person who drove the car, the exhaust system fell out. Oh, no. Uh, no, not the next person. <laughs> <laughs> right, right there. A lot of cases. Right <laughs> Yeah, that was the old days when when cars had carburetors and you know yes. way before electronic ignition and distributors. And boy, if you turned that ignition off for a few seconds and turned the key back on, you would oh, get an boy. explosion. That in some case we 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 learned not to do it on American Motors cars. It blew the muffler <laughs> off every time. <laughs> anyway, so but there are people. Uh, I guess Larry, the, the reason my brother is telling you this story and exposing me, uh, <laughs> uh, who mistreat rental cars that way. However, yeah. I think you're on the right track because the vast majority of people who rent a car for a day or two, especially a minivan, yeah, aren't doing thinking. donuts. Right. They're not trying to blow the mufflers off. Yeah, and they're not as clever as Tony was. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and so, you know, so I think you, you're perfectly okay to be, to be thinking about buying it from a place that rents cars as opposed to, uh, and I've always been opposed to cars that are leased. I think yeah. that people who lease cars do so because they don't want to be bothered with any of the normal things associated with car ownership, yeah, right. like oil changes and the like. Yeah, you know. So I would be. Where, where does your wife want to buy the car? Well, she'd like to just uh, go to a a large used car lot and and deal with them there. Well, so it's, it's entirely possible if you do that, you're going to get a car that has either been traded in by somebody who had leased it or traded in by somebody who had the same kind of. Uh, uh, mentality. Mentality about not maintaining the car. <laughs> I'll keep right. it for two or three years, and then I'll just trade it in and get another one before I have a chance to wreck it. We yeah. strongly believe that the rental car companies are a good place to buy a car. And if they do nothing else, they, they are driven by a whole bunch of different people. So the chances of getting a, a string of one driver after another that's wrecking the thing is pretty small. Right. And they do, at the very least, change the oil often, which is all that's really required. Yeah, you know, of a new vehicle, and that's that's the most you could ask for, and I think that's better than you're getting with the average person who leases a car. Right, and yeah. that may be the reason I think that a lot of companies now, uh, a lot of manufacturers are paying for the maintenance too, because they know that people don't take the cars in to have them serviced. Sure. And they figure if we do it for free, I think they have to go the next step, which is come to your house and get the car. <laughs> All right, <laughs> because the people who don't want to do it just don't want to do it. Period. They they're too busy to be yeah. inconvenienced especially for a car that they don't own. But you sure. can tell your wife that we're very much on your side of this. Right. And, and your plan has our blessing, Larry. Oh, well, And if amen. anything goes wrong with the car that you buy, you get it to us, we'll fix it for nothing. <laughs> See, Great. That's our new warranty. <laughs> See you later. Super. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> one 888 car talk or one 227 8255 Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi there. I am so excited to be on your show. And so are we, Amy. No, Nancy. I got two of the letters there, though. Amy was A-M-Y, and you got an A and a Y in your name, unless you spell Nancy with an I, which no, you don't. I, no, I absolutely don't. No. The real good talk shows, the real good calling shows have a monitor on the you know on the table. Right. And and flashed up on the screen is the name of the next caller. Yeah, the next caller is Nancy. She's from Albuquerque, New Mexico no, and her I'm question not. is blah, I'm, blah, blah, blah. I'm, well, we don't have that monitor. That's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so how are we supposed to know who you are? <laughs> Get off our backs, will you? <laughs> well, let We're, me tell you who I am. I am Nancy. I'm yeah. from Marion Station, Pennsylvania. Okay. And I have a, actually, it's not my car. It's really my husband. And you have a Saab. No, a four-cylinder 96 Camry sedan. Stop being so contrary. <laughs> was 96 Camry. 96 yeah. Camry, four-cylinder. That's important. And are you in the eastern center of 
west we're, we're, end of Pennsylvania. Right outside of Philadelphia. That okay. would be the middle, yeah. 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 Middle? <laughs> Far yeah, no, east. east side. Okay, and, and you, are you a marine biologist? No. No. We don't have anything right about her. Well, we our need data, a new monitor. Our data is all wrong. It's all wrong. You have to, you have to get your monitor, um, your monitor monitor to, to get better information. Do you, have, do you have two kids? I do have two kids. All right, finally. <laughs> now just their ages and sexes. Okay, they're both girls and they're three and 11. No, they're boys and they're 11 and 14. Oh, I got almost. one of them right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're, you're, you're about that. Getting better. Now. We're getting better. Two percent, maybe. So, so what's wrong with this piece of junk Camry? What happened is, this is my husband's car, and two times when I tried to start it, I could feel the energy draining as I was shifting from park into drive. There you are. You turn the key. You, you start key, it up. It goes the, vroom. You hear the vroom. And then as you start shifting it, it just kind of dies. The, the engine sound kind of just Diminishes. fades out. Mm. Oh, and, it, and it stalls out? And it stalls out. Got it. Okay. Didn't become a problem until he experienced it, and then he took it to the to the Toyota dealership and had it checked out. Um, they thought it might be an electrical problem. I don't think so. It checked out fine. They said it wasn't, you know, the alternator, the ignition, the fuel line, everything was fine. They found nothing. And my husband says that if he really revs it up when he starts it, mm. that it doesn't, um, it doesn't, uh, doesn't do die that. on him. Yeah. Well, mm. tell him not to do that anymore. Don't rev it up. No. No, it's better to have it die and, and restart. Yeah. Yeah, then rev it like the, that. The worst thing you, you can do to a car is to rev it up when the engine's cold, when you just start it up. Okay. That you can count the number of days you can do that before the engine dies. Huh. So you don't want to do that. So, what, so you, what is it? How the hell do we know? <laughs> <laughs> Why did I call? <laughs> I don't know, because you wanted well, to waste some time. Yeah. I mean, it sounds to me like the engine, when it starts, is not revving quite fast enough. Have any trouble with the boys? We have we, we have boys we ourselves. We have boys. We've had eleven and fourteen year old boys. We can help you with a question about them. <laughs> <laughs> they're uh, they're they're probably still human. Is that right? Eleven and fourteen? Um, semi. Semi human. Oh, varies. yeah. The I fourteen tell you, year old is is fast fading. It's gonna get so much worse, man. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna wonder okay. why you, know, you brought them why, into this world. Why did I do this? Well, I, I've thought of that. No, they're going to yeah. hate you. No, you ha you haven't. No, you can't comprehend the full force of their hatred for you. Oh, you can't. <laughs> oh yeah. man, you will be despised beyond your wildest dreams. I mean, my when 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 we were first married, my wife said that she wanted to have kids, and I was violently opposed to it. I I said, why would you want to do that to yourself? This is ridiculous. And she convinced me that it was probably a great, wonderful thing to do. I mean, it was God's will, and nature wanted this, and, and, and motherhood and ran motherhood her family. Motherhood ran in her family, right? Her <laughs> mother was a mother. Her mother's <laughs> mother had been a mother, and so she convinced me to do this. And I remember it was when my son was about fifteen. That she leaned over one day and whispered in my ear, "You were right." <laughs> but how old is he now? Uh, I think he's about forty. No, <laughs> no, he's eighteen. And has it gotten better? He's he's. I think yeah. He's, he's turned the he's, corner. He's, he's turned the corner. He's become human again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, I I can't attest to it. I yeah. but it seems as though that's true. Yeah. Well, yeah. we can go back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, but then let me ask you a question: Do I discuss my car problem with a psychologist? I think so. <laughs> yeah, you got as much chance of getting an answer. <laughs> Here's what I would do: I would take it to the same guys who said everything was okay, right? And I would leave it with them overnight. Yeah, and I would ask them to start it from cold in the morning, mm -hmm. and find out what the RPMs are in the morning, and they will discover that they're too low. Yeah, here's what's wrong with it: you have a faulty coolant temp sensor. That's my gut feeling. That's good. That's and good. They, and they should put the ohm meter on this thing. There's, there's a chart that when they look it up, they, they, they may have it even memorized. That'll tell you at this temperature, the, the coolant temp sensor should have this many ohms. Okay. Then if, if it isn't that, then what's the next step? Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, I mean. Well, you call us back. <laughs> I mean, we can't we can't go dealing with hypothetical questions, Nancy. We're very very busy. <laughs> good, good luck with those boys, and remember what we told you. I I will remember yeah. it when more they more. hate you. Remember, it's not them talking; it's the little devils that live in them. <laughs> Thank you. That's very reassuring. See you, Nancy. Okay. Bye bye. 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 <laughs>
<laughs> All right, look, I think it's time for us to take a, a little break so our stations can pass along some important messages. You mean like traffic, weather, stuff like that? No, messages about distancing, disclaimers, and denying, you know? <laughs> ah, the usual. We'll be back with more of your calls and a brand new puzzler in a minute. So please stay tuned. She'll know at the wash and go, I'm gone. And I'll be such a hard part replacing. She'll drive around searching street by street. I'm waiting out here in the heat. Cause I'm her hubcap. I'm leaning on a fence post I went rolling, rolling, rolling She kept going So if you see an old Malibu Cobalt blue Elvis on the dash and beads on the rear view Tell her you've seen me I'm her hubcap And even though Tibetan monks hope we're gone by their next lives <laughs> Whenever they hear us say it, this is NPR. This message comes from Pineapple Street Studios' new podcast, Stay Away from Matthew McGill. The story of a man who dies alone in the woods and leaves behind a box full of wild stories. When reporter Eric Menel finds this box, he becomes consumed by it until it totally changes his life and family. New episodes are available every week wherever you get your podcasts. Binge all episodes exclusively on the new Odyssey app. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y. Misrepresentative Democracy. A new series about voting in America from NPR's Throughline. Listen now. Ha! We're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us. Click and clack the Tappert Brothers, and we're here to discuss cars, car repair, and uh, the new puzzler. And the, I think the it's, new historic folkloric. Yes, it's puzzle. historic, it's folkloric, it's automotic. <laughs> uh, hopefully not idiotic or pathetic. <laughs> Okay, and, go. Anyway, this was sent in by uh, uh, Laura Adamson. This took place, she says, this is a little story she's going to yeah. tell us. It took place in the early 70s during the first gas crunch when there were long lines at gas stations and Toyota started looking really good to people who owned Detroit gas guzzlers. Yes. And she says, my friend Marianne lived in, uh, rural, in a rural neighborhood in upstate New York and someone was sneaking around late at night in the inky shadows siphoning gasoline while the honest people were asleep. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, Marianne and the, and the sheriff got together and, and hatched a plan to catch the thief, and it involved using Marianne's car and its full tank of gasoline as the bait. And unlike lots of her neighbors, she did not uh, yet own a locking gas cap, so her, mm -hmm. her uh, thing was very uh, siphonable. And the idea was not to catch him with a secret alarm or by, you know, hidden cameras or wrapping the car in fly paper or anything like that, <laughs> but just by allowing him to steal the gas and take it home for use in his own car. The ah. thief did strike and siphon her gas, and it was the end of the gas thefts. The question is, of course, what trap did they lay and what was it about Marianne's car that made it easy to figure out who the gas thief was. Now, if you think you know think the I've got it. If you think you know the answer, write it on the back of a $20 bill and send it to Puzzler Tower, Car Talk Plaza, Box 3500, Harvard Square, Cambridge. Our Fair City. Matt 02238. Or you can email us your answer from cartalk.com. But right now, if you have a question about your car or anything else, give us a call. The number is 888 Car Talk. That's 888 Two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Um, this is Tim. I'm calling from Roanoke in Virginia. Hi, Tim. Roanoke. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I've been to Roanoke. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do we care if you've been to Roanoke? We don't care. So you've been to Roanoke. So has Tim. I got lost in Roanoke. He didn't say I'm in Roanoke and you're not. <laughs> well, he implied it. <laughs> What's up, Tim? Well, uh, I have a problem with. A 1966 Plymouth Fury. Really? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> so I've, it's possibly a problem you've come across before. Probably. It's, um, mayonnaise on my dipstick. Really? Oh. Yeah. Well, 
I, I know exactly what the problem is. The mayonnaise dipstick syndrome, MDS. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think the mayonnaise on your dipstick is really nothing to be concerned about. Really? Right. Uh, my guess is that it doesn't really get driven on the highway very much, and it's mostly been relegated to around town use. That's exactly right. And the mayonnaise is a consequence of the combustion process. When you when you combust gasoline, one of the products of combustion is water. Agua, as we call it here. Right. In La La Land. <laughs> <laughs> and, and because the water, uh, most of which comes out the tailpipe, uh, uh, some of it can blow past the rings and wind up in with the oil in the crankcase. Oh, and, when really? you mix, and when you take water and oil and you froth it up, yeah. like in a blender, which is what's happening down there, what do you get? You get the chocolate frap. No, you get mayonnaise. It's all right, mayonnaise. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Hellman's, I think. So not a blown head gasket, not hundreds of dollars of service. Oh, no. No, as a matter of fact, if you, if you make sure that your PCV system is working uh, and you change B your oil. PCB system? P PCB, yeah. No, PCV. <laughs> positive, positive crankcase ventilation. It's uh, a little valve. Right. Uh, it's the only emissions device on this car right. whatsoever. I mean, it, of course, I didn't want to lecture you on the fact that you are poisoning the entire environment. Leave the guy alone. By driving this whole heat. Think and about how, And think you about, would do great service to your fellow citizens in Roanoke, to which I will never return because you live there driving this heat. <laughs> you could do great service to them by junking this and buying yourself a nice wait, Hyundai. Wait, wait, wait. Think oh, about I don't all want the, any of that foreign rubbish. Think about all the Earth's resources that are being saved by the fact that Tim is not buying a new car. They've already made the Hyundai with his name on it. Think about all the <laughs> noggers that would have to die to make new seats for a new oh, car. Think about all the iron that will have to come out of the ground and, and, and deplete the magma. <laughs> I take it back. No one ever thinks about the magma. <laughs> <laughs> Keep driving it, Tim. Change your oil a little more often. Okay. Like once a year. <laughs> At least. <laughs> At least. At least. <laughs> See you later. Thank you. One eight 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 Car Talk or one eight 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 two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, my name is Tonya, and I'm calling from Tucson. Tonya from Tucson. Uh, it, unfortunately, yeah. Is is Tonya a nickname for Antonia? No, it's just as it is. Tonya. Yeah. I love it. Tonya. Yeah, my parents are good, huh? Yeah, they they're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you say unfortunately? You don't like Tucson? Uh, no. No, uh, I, no. I, I can't figure out why anyone would live here. Why do you? I'm in school. What, what do you? Maybe you hate school and you don't hate Tucson. One would think by now I'm working on a PhD for God's sake. You yeah. are in, in what? In what? Yeah. Um, it's uh called Arid Land Studies. Arid Land Studies. It's a new one on me. Yeah. Well, you're in the, you're wow. in the right part of the world, and I got news for you. <laughs> if you're to pursue this. The, you ain't going to Honolulu <laughs> <laughs> to do it. Yeah, talk research. about putting yourself in a box, Tonya. What, what, what are you thinking? If you don't like Tucson, how are you going to like the Gobi Desert? <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, what is the most, uh, uh, I would say, profound thing you have learned that, uh. that you might share with us? Analysis of variance. <laughs> <laughs> Be besides really like that. that. <laughs> I don't know. I can't think of anything. Okay. But, you know, the th <laughs> Tucson's really gotten to you, huh? All right. Anyway, what's the uh, matter with your car? Maybe we can work on that. Okay. It, well, it's not my car. It's my neighbor. And I have a disagreement with him over his choice of chemicals that he uses when he's working on his car. Ah. And the methods that he uses to clean his car parts. Okay. Oh, where do you live, first of all, so we can get a visual imagery here going? Okay, well, we have carports that um, are next door to each other. All right, so there you are. I'm with you now. Okay. Okay, so he works on either his Chevy or the Datsun or the Bronco. Last time he was cleaning, <laughs> he was cleaning out the axle of his car with kerosene in an airbrush kind of thing, an air gun. And so I came home, and my whole house was filled with kerosene, the smell. Oh, so he has like a compressor? Yeah, exactly. He gets out the compressor, and he, he blasts everything with kerosene or with um, uh, carburetor cleaner. Oh, man. So isn't there an, aren't there by now alternative chemicals that aren't so toxic or isn't there a better way that he can do it and plus he doesn't wear a mask he doesn't wear anything to protect himself well he's got no one to hide from <laughs> <laughs> he's not robbing a bank is he <laughs> well you, you know uh how old is this guy 
Mm, not that old. Somewhere like mm, 55, 50. Yeah, I can see him. And what does he do for a living otherwise? Um, he works for the city. So he's home a lot. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, he does. He works a lot, <laughs> but he's home a lot on weekends. Well, I mean, my first thought was not are there other chemicals he can use, but my yeah. thought was are there laws against this? And I wouldn't be at all surprised if you dropped a dime on him that he'd be locked up in no time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also do work as a mediator, and I know that's really not a good way to go about it. I, I, would, I don't think that's a good I way to approach it. I think you should go and talk to him. I well, mean, I like him, and I have. And? I, and I read in the label, and I said, Bill, it says right here on the label, do not have prolonged exposure to your skin. And yeah. so you shouldn't be wearing those same pants that were saturated with it yesterday, <laughs> today. <laughs> yeah. So and, he's a nice guy, and he's oh, and reasonable. Oh, I like him, yeah. He's a good neighbor. I think what you should do is there are, uh, for example, uh, lots of uh, solvents mm -hmm. that don't use uh, petroleum-based things like toluene and uh, right. perchloroethylene. Right, as we call them. Yeah. Yeah, the petrochemicals. So I think you should... Buy them for him. Exactly. Buy him a little Christmas present. Oh, okay. For example, we, we use a brake cleaner now that's it's like it's water-based. Okay. And it, it doesn't work as well as the CRC stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, which has been, you know, a mainstay for 105 years in the automotive industry. Right. But that's why most of us who fix cars are down to one or two syllables. <laughs> 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 you know, so, so if, you, if you can get them away from this stuff and, and get them an alternative, that yeah. would be great. Okay. And next yeah. time there's a government surplus sale, go see if you can buy like a four-foot diameter fan. <laughs> One of those big babies, you know, and just mount it next to your house. And but then it goes over to Connie's house next door, and that wouldn't be good either. No, well, no. she could get one, get two, and then you can <laughs> just keep it right there in the middle. <laughs> good luck, hey, Tonya. Good luck, Tonya. All right, thanks a lot. Bye bye. Bye. One eight 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 Car Talk. That's eight 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 two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Yusuf. I'm calling from Toledo, Ohio. Yusuf. That's right. Where in Ohio? In Toledo. One of my favorite places. <laughs> Not one of mine. <laughs> so what's on your mind? Well, I was hoping you could settle uh, an argument I've been having with my fiancé. Mm, always dangerous. I know. For all of us. I have a um, Saturn with about 107,000 miles on it, and I get my oil changed at um, one of these national chains. Like Jiffy Lube. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Exactly like that. Exactly like that. <laughs> How exactly? Very exactly? Uh, very exactly. Precisely like exactly. Precisely exactly <laughs> like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and every time I go to this unnamed national chain, they convince me that I need to spend much more money and add many more things on than what I want to do, which is just get my old chain. Wait, they convince you or they try to convince you? Well, well, they, they succeed in convincing Oh, me, so you've fallen for this every time. Every time, every time. <laughs> so, so this time that I went, um, they had a new one. And it was, well, because I have over 100,000 miles on my car, I need to use this high-mileage oil, which is obviously much more expensive than the standard oil they give me. Mm. And they told me that it would protect my engine and give me more power. Now, yeah. since I've been using it, I actually feel like I'm getting some more power out of the car. No, oh, you sap. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even gotten to the argument yet. <laughs> so I, I told my fiancé this, and she said, Ah, oh, you sap. <laughs> and said that I'd... <laughs> Wait, when they put it in this oil, did it say anything about extra virgin on the can? <laughs> <laughs> so she said that I'd fall in for the placebo effect. Yeah. yeah. And so my question to you is, am I a sap? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, there are. I mean, I I know somebody at least makes one oil that's for high mileage vehicles. Mm -hmm. I don't honestly know exactly how it differs or what it claims to do, uh -huh. uh, but I think it's designed for vehicles which have begun to leak or burn oil. Yeah, I mean, there are high mileage oils, uh -huh. but I never knew. And maybe this is something else that we don't know about. I never knew that they were designed to give more power. Yeah, that's what uh, I was told. I could understand that they could be designed to burn, like, 
and instead of burning a quart every 50 miles, it might go up to like 60, 65 miles. <laughs> <laughs> But you're not you you're not burning any oil at all, nor have you been burning. No, 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 no real but, problem I mean, at all. The, oil, the way the oil could get you better mileage is if it were slipperier, for or example, more, or lower viscosity. Yeah. Well, I haven't noticed any better mileage either, really. Oh, you just feel more power. Yeah. Right. Well, the power. One of the ways you get more power is to have lower viscosity. Okay. So, I mean, uh, the the lower viscosity of the oil, the slippery of the oil. Okay. The more power you'll get, but it, you'd hardly notice it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you suck. <sap. laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so much for that. Well, here's the most. Here's the more important question: uh-huh. How much more per quart did it cost? Well, okay, the the regular service is twenty dollars. Yeah. With this, just the oil was thirty seven, thirty eight dollars. Oh, oh. Plus labor. Plus labor. Oh yeah, yeah. So when you usually go there, you pay them twenty, and this time you paid them what fifty? Well, well, when I usually go there, I, you, you get know, the wiper to... blades, the air freshener, <laughs> right. the fuzzy yeah. dice. You never get out for the 50. carpet cleaner. You never got out for as twenty. I try, I never get out of there with just twenty bucks. <laughs> you are a great guy. You know, Yusuf, you're you're just a nice guy. <laughs> well, you are. I mean, the fact that you have. I don't want to say fallen for all of this. You've believed. You, you've. I've fallen. Let's let's not sugarcoat. No, no, it. no. I mean, I mean. Yeah, but you're a trusting soul. You're a I trusting am. soul. You trusted these guys, and I think your fiance should be thrilled that she's marrying such a man. What do you What do you do for a living? I'm a I'm a medical student. You're a medical student. There you go. Well, you're going to be. Had a... told, if he had said I'm a lawyer, then we would have shot everything. <laughs> shot the whole. <laughs> well, no. you're going to be a good and compassionate doctor. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And I say, if you think you're getting more power out of the car, <laughs> fine. Go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I think you're a sap. <laughs> Well, thank you but, for being no, honest. But, but I don't think you're a sap. I think you're just a, a, an honest person yourself, and you can't believe that these nice people would be trying to put one over on you. Right. And I think your fiance is a very lucky girl. Well, thank That's you. That's all I can say. All right. Yes, well, for 1095, we'll send her the tape. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Yusuf. All right, bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Well, it's happened again. You've squandered an otherwise perfectly good hour listening to Car Talk. Our esteemed producer is Doug the Subway Fugitive, Bongo Boy, Frogman, not a slave to fashion, Berman. <laughs> Our social producers are David the Cavs of Belleville Green and Catherine Frau Blucher. <laughs> Thank you, Fenolosa. Our web lackey is Doug the Old Grey Mayor, assisted by Connie Bridgeford. Our engineer is John Cartman Parati. Our theme music is by David Dog Grisman and our technical, spiritual, and menu advisor, just back from the Siam Sushi Salami Sea Bass and Saki Sepathalon, <laughs> John Buckley. Cheatman Howe and WBUR in Boston. And even though the Three Stooges complained that NPR is getting too lowbrow for their taste, whenever we say it, this is NPR. Support for NPR and the following message come from WISE, the smart way to move money around the world. With the WISE account, you'll always get the real exchange.